Good morning, ladies. Happy Monday. I am so excited to be here with you. We've got an awesome live today. I hope that you had a great weekend. My kids went out and about doing all the pumpkin patches and corn mazes and all of that today with, or not today, <laughs> this weekend with their friends. They had a ton of fun with that. Um, the weather is nice. I hope it is nice where you are, although in Charlotte, it's going to get cold tomorrow. I don't know where you are, but cold in Charlotte is, you know, 35 in the morning, and I am not looking forward to it. I don't like cold. That's why we moved from Massachusetts, but it is what it is. Today, we are going to be talking about showing up and doing your best. Um, this happened to me a few times last week, and this is always the case, like if I feel like I am struggling with it, then I want to bring it up, do and share what research the Bible has told me about and share that with you so that hopefully if you are struggling with something um, similar or maybe something else, you can apply this to not only your fitness, not only your nutrition, but your parenting and how you show up in other areas of your life. First and foremost, we are going to start with prayer. So if there is something that you need prayer for, please comment in the section. If you are watching the podcast recorded, please let us know, um, either on YouTube or Spotify or Amazon, any of your favorite podcast apps. Let us know in the comment section, section what you need prayer for. I check those every day. So we're absolutely going to be praying for you. Um, if you don't want to share your prayer, you want to keep it unspoken, that is perfectly fine too. My SOS <laughs> to my clients and to all of you here is just an emoji. So if you comment with an emoji, I know that you um, need prayer. A praise report for Myra's son being baptized. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. That is huge. So did you know that was happening? I know that we have our meeting <laughs> after this. Did you know that was happening? Was it a decision he just made? That is so awesome. Love praise reports. Oh, welcome, 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 welcome your son to, to the kingdom. Yes, yay. Awesome. Well, yes, share your praise reports too. We want those as well. Um, let's start with prayer. And then we will hop into it. Lord God, I just thank you so much for bringing us together today under your word. Father, I thank you for the breath that is in our lungs. I thank you for the ability to move, um, no matter what that looks like for each person, for the ability um, to eat food, regardless of what that food looks like. Lord, just thank you for your beautiful things. There's so much going on in the world, Lord, and we just ask um, for your help in fixing our eyes on you. Help us to see the beautiful things that are going on in such a turbulent, sin-filled world that we live in. Help us to focus on your goodness, that you are in control, that there is nothing that surprises you, that there is nothing that you forgot, that it is finished, and help us to keep pushing forward for your kingdom, not our own. We love you. We praise you. We worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Claudia, homeschooling or not, we homeschool. I absolutely love it. Um, that is us, obviously. I love it. Um, but it's not for everybody. So um, I hope that the Lord gives you discernment for that and know that it's not as hard as uh, the world would make you believe. <laughs> it's not as hard. Now, the other thing I will say is make sure you look up for um, all of your state laws and all of that so that you're in compliance, but it's one of the best decisions we ever made. I actually was praying the same thing, Claudia, um, before COVID hit and then COVID hit and um, God did the decision making for me, <laughs> which is great. So we started when COVID hit and we haven't stopped. So I, I am praying for you. 
Nikki, yes, it's not as hard as they want you to believe. There's so many great resources. And Claudia, in this group are a ton of homeschool moms and we're Christian-based. There's a ton of information out there. I think just like with exercising, right? There's so much information out there and it ends up being overwhelmed. And then we're sort of um, stuck, right? We're like, what? what choice do we make? Where do we go? What do we do? We're just in decision and information overload. Try to shut all of that out and just speak with you in the Lord. And depending on the ages of your kids, speak to them. I spoke to my son about it. He was in fourth grade when we decided, and I asked him every year, do you want to continue with homeschool? Do you want to go back to public school? Do No offense to anyone that's in public school. It's just, it's a little bit of a mess right now where we are. Um, and he says he wants to stay home, homeschooled. So yes, Shannon, I love that this is a good reboot for you. Thank you so much for all of you, do, um, all that you do. Working in the ER is not easy at all. Um, good reports on your PET scan, Shannon. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Praise God for healing. Yes, amen, amen. Yeah, see, it's possible. It's possible, all things are possible through Christ, right? But you've got to be in line with him. That's not the calling that everybody has, but if you're having that struggle, just give yourself that grace. And I think this very well goes into what we're talking about today with our exercise. Um, give yourself that grace. A lot of times we try to make um, things be perfect. When I started homeschooling, um, I had such a rigid schedule, right? I tried to make homeschooling look exactly like it did in public school. Like we wake up at seven and we do all these things and there's a little or no break. And I'm like, that's not why we're homeschooling, right? We're homeschooling for more freedom, for customized things, for putting more attention to where you're struggling, where they're struggling, putting emphasis on what they're doing well, giving that attention um, and focusing on the good. It, it's not going to look like what public school did right? It's going to look completely different. And a lot of people unschool their first year and a lot of um, people do different things. But um, Corey, behind in social behavior, my kids are the most social people I know. I would argue that's the biggest misconception of homeschooling is that kids don't get social interactions. My kids were gone all weekend with friends. Um, <laughs> They were all over the place all weekend. I drive them around to things so much. It is crazy how social they are. And my personal thought is every homeschool kid I come into contact with is very well-rounded, very educated, very polite, um, has actual manners. Those things are not being taught in school by the other kids that they are surrounded with. So... My kids are very social. <laughs> they're, they're out and about. And I'm an introvert. I know it seems like I'm extroverted here and I love going out. I do love people. I'm an introverted extrovert is what I say. Like I love people and I love chatting with people and I love what I do and meeting with clients, but it's draining to me. At the end of the day, I can be very drained and I need alone time to recharge. And if someone asks me to do something, especially with social anxiety, I'm usually like, yeah, that sounds good. And then I'm like, actually, no, I don't want to do anything. <laughs> I don't want to do that at all. So um, it's very easy, even if you are introverted or anything like that. Um, but our neighbors behind us are homeschoolers. They got into Northeastern University. Um, in fact, the one that got into Cornell University, um, the recruiter there said that they look for homeschool students now because they are so advanced and they graduate early um, and they have a much better understanding of what they want to do and where they want to go. So they're much more well-rounded. But everyone is, everyone is different, right? So this is the fun thing about our exercise too. And I want to specifically talk about exercise today. Obviously it does go into homeschooling. It does go into nutrition, but I want to go into exercise because so often we try to make this like perfect plan. 
And I am getting back into running. If you don't know, I tore my ACL a year ago. I had surgery in December and I was down and out for a, a long time with that surgery. And I just got back into running. I say just, it's been about, I don't know, three months now that I've gotten back into running. It is like my peace, my quiet time. When I get my little runners high, I come back feeling so good. Um, but I'm averaging about six miles a day. So there were two times and one this morning that I said, I don't have time to run six miles today. And a lot of times my previous self or the enemy self too is trying to get me to not move forward and just stay stuck. Just because I don't have the time to do an hour run doesn't mean I don't have the time to do a 25 minute run. I can get that done. And that pushing through is really hard to do. It's hard with school and homeschooling too. And Corey, I know that you said um, public schools are lacking. There's a lot that's going on in public schools right now. And there's a lot of things that, you know, other people are okay with. We just were not okay with that right now. And I have best friends who are teachers. I have really good friends who are school counselors. I've yet to find a teacher this year that is happy. And that has been my thing. If I'm sending my kids to school with teachers that like aren't happy at their jobs and aren't like doing what they want to do and are upset and stressed and all of this, that relates to all of your kids, right? We need teachers that need to be there. We need a Christian presence for teachers in school, but they can't just be one and it can't just be two in a whole school. Um, so it's hard. It's very, very hard um, to make that decision, but we're praying for you. Um, but the same thing happens with working out. We think or with homeschool, we think it has to be the certain way. I planned for five hours today, but oh my gosh, we've got all these errands to do. We've got all these places to do. I've only got one hour. We could say, I'm not going to do anything or I'm going to make the most of this hour that I do have <laughs> at home, right? We're going to read, we're going to do math. We're going to do English. We're going to do something all together. We're gonna to have prayer time together. We're going to do our Bible study. I love uh, my son and I and my daughter, we're all going through the book of Daniel together. So we sit down, it's right here at my desk. We sit down and do Daniel together. Um, Mila as well, even though she's in first grade, she follows right along with what they're doing. So that can happen with, with workouts too. We can go, I don't have an hour. I don't have 30 minutes, but do you have five? Do you have 10? Today for myself, it was all right. And I, I almost talked myself out of it. I am not, um, I am not immune to these struggles that everyone deals with. I would rather sit down too. I have a million to-do lists today. Like my, this is a Monday of all Mondays. Like this is a big Monday. Um, there's 30 calls I have today. There's emails I need to send out. There's clients I need to onboard. And when I talk like that, I need to do this and I need to do that and I need to do that, I instantly get overwhelmed. And I need to run for an hour. I don't need to run for an hour. I get to run for, how long did I run today? We're going to find this out. 38 minutes. And you know what? 38 minutes is better than zero. And I don't have to do these calls. I get to chat with you ladies. I get to chat with people that want to speak and learn and love Jesus and learn how to treat their bodies correctly in a loving way that honors our God, not in a way that is vain, not in a way that's just for something, you know, event or whatever, but for a lifelong change. We get to work out. We get to choose healthy foods. We don't have to. We get to. So often I hear all of these, these 
word plays is what I will call them. Oh, well, I went out to eat and, you know, everyone else around me was ordering this and I just had to order a salad without dressing. No, you didn't. You didn't have to order it. I know we talk about this a lot, right? You don't have to do anything. I didn't have to run today. You didn't have to get up and get out of bed today, but something pushed you to get up and out of bed. That same something that pushed you to get up and get out of bed today, whether it was your kids or your alarm or your job or getting your husband ready for work or getting yourself ready for work, whatever that is, something got you out of bed. You need to find that same something to get you out the door to the gym with a video on your TV or your laptop. There are workouts in your hand. There are workouts in what you're watching right now on your computer, on your laptop, on your phone, on your TV. There are workouts everywhere, everywhere. Then why do we get stuck? Because we look for perfection. And that is not what God wants. Second Timothy 2.15 says, do your best, your best to present yourself to God as one approved a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. Do your best, not what you think you should do, not what an app tells you to do, not what the internet says you should do. Do your best. When I'm training my clients, I give them obviously more girls, right? And throughout that, I'm telling them, do your best. If you need to stop right now and take a break, that's your best. Stop, take a break. Let's take a rest and hop back into it. Pushing yourself to exhaustion just to get some certain number done isn't going to help you because guess what? You're not going to show up tomorrow. You're going to be sore. You're going to get injured. You're going to get hurt. Do your best. You don't need to follow with what the world is doing with crazy diets. You don't have to start out. I did not start out running six miles. I didn't. And I've talked about that for months now because I'm struggling so much with it because Three miles was my warm up to an 18 mile run. That is what I liked to do. And I was doing um, jujitsu. That's how I tore my ACL in a competition. But I was doing jujitsu four times a week. I loved it. I was running. I was doing all these different things. I was recording things. No, I can't just hop back into that right now. So if you've taken some time off, you've had a baby, you've had a blessing, you've had some life come at you, you've had some disruptions, you've had things go on that are outside of your control, let's get that back and stop thinking, I have to do this this way, this way or the highway. That is not how God wants you to think. It's his way or the highway. We are the ones going off track most of the time right? We're the ones that are deviating from his plan and he pulls us back gently and lovingly and it's like, no, Heather, popping right here. God never said be perfect. God never said when the world was made in Genesis that this is perfect. He said, this is good. This is good. What I made. This is a good offering. Stop aiming for perfection. I swear it's from the enemy. I'm a perfectionist too. Hello, Corey. Type A over here. Type A, ADD, anxiety ridden, (laughs) sometimes OCD, which somehow only comes out when my cycle's coming. Sorry to any men that are watching. Hence my room being organized this week. My husband's like, what's going on? You know what's going on. It's the organization time of month. (laughs) If only it was that way all the time. I aim for perfection. God says it is good. Stop aiming for perfect. Stop aiming for it. You're just going to get frustrated. You're going to talk yourself out of things. Your best for me, starting out running, my best was just 
opening the door and getting out and trusting that my knee was going to hold up, right? Because I had been off it for so long. I had been not using it at all besides through physical therapy. My best was walking down my driveway at one point. And it's not a long driveway. Ladies, I don't have like a mile long driveway. It's very short. That was my best. My best some days in recovery was putting a sock on. My best one day was tying my shoes. I remember celebrating that with my physical therapist. I put a shoe on and I tied it myself. That was my best. It wasn't my all time. It wasn't a personal record. I never counted tying my shoes as a win before this. It was something I just did. And that certainly wouldn't have been a win when I was marathon training. Absolutely not. And it wouldn't have been a win even when I wasn't, uh, right? I think for some of you right now, that wouldn't be a win, something you're celebrating. Let's celebrate the small things that God has allowed you to do because I couldn't tie a shoe. I couldn't put on pants. I couldn't get upstairs. I couldn't shower. I couldn't walk. I couldn't go up a hill. I certainly couldn't go down. I was in a walker. We were rolling. But that was my best. I want you to look at Timothy, 2 Timothy 2.15, when you think about that perfection and do your best. It doesn't say be perfect or go home. It doesn't say you better show up and give it all that you've got and leave it there. It says, do your best. And then Colossians 3, 23 through 24 says, whatever you do, as you know this, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, not for yourself either. We have these big plans and visions of what a perfect workout routine would look like and what a perfect um, nutrition would look like. How many times do we start off the week perfect or maybe even the day? We're like, we're going to eat perfect today. Breakfast, eggs, lunch, salad, dinner, whatever, something. And then <laughs> eight o'clock comes and you're like, I'm starving. I've got nothing else to give. I was tried to be perfect all day, tried to be perfect all day. And I'm just hungry and I need M&Ms stat. And it's Halloween. So I'm just going to rip open the Halloween candy. I don't even care anymore. And then all that focus on perfection was for nothing. And all that work was undone in four minutes of binge chocolate eating. It's not, it's not worth it. So whatever you do, work heartily for the Lord. Don't eat healthy under your own strength. Don't exercise under your own strength. Don't try to meal plan a perfect week under your own strength. God gave the Israelites manna for the day, one, and they couldn't hold leftovers. Whenever um, I don't eat leftovers, I quote the Bible. <laughs> I'm like, Dustin, sometimes the leftovers just rot away and it's biblical, okay? There are times that it's great to have leftovers. In fact, I encourage you to, but before you get to that point, you have to just get through one day, one day, one meal, one meal, one day. And don't do it for you. Don't do it for the scale. Don't try to manipulate while you're doing it. So often we do that. I'm doing it for the Lord. But if I don't see results in three weeks after doing this, I'm just going to quit. Maybe God's doing something bigger through you, through your exercise and your nutrition struggle than the scale. Maybe he wants you to see that that's ancillary. That's not what gets you to heaven. Your pant size isn't what gets you to heaven. Your ability to run five miles or five feet doesn't get you to heaven. But working for him does. And he wants us to move. He doesn't want a lukewarm Christian. We're all in with Christ. That's what we are all in with. And we are going to preach his gospel. We're going to preach Jesus and get other people to know Jesus and running right now is my testimony to do that. I know it seems silly, but people have seen me struggle. I'm in a neighborhood of a, a thousand homes. These people have seen me cry at the end of my driveway when I couldn't get back up because we're on the slightest hill. 
These people have seen me in a walker. These people have seen me in crutches. These people have seen me with a cane. These people have seen me not do what I am used to doing. Sometimes it's in your most difficult seasons that people are going to look to you and go, what is she working for? Because you know what? It would have been really easy to just stop and go, well, I'm meant to be a couch potato. And you will see me on the, my, my 600 pound life and you will crane me out of here. And it is what it is. I'm gonna eat my sorrow and I'm never gonna feel better because fueling your emotions with food does not solve the root problem of what's going on. It just makes it worse. I could have punished myself and forced myself to do a bunch of workouts that I wasn't ready for and working out to try to make up for yesterday's eating isn't why you're doing it. You're doing it for the Lord, not for men. And that includes you. That includes the scale. That includes your pant size. You're doing it for the Lord because I'm not supposed to be stagnant. I'm not supposed to be lukewarm. I'm supposed to be moving and growing. And now those same people that saw me crying, sitting at the end of my driveway, see me running. And they asked this past week, how long did you run? And I go six miles and they go, what? I go, the Lord is good. He has healed me. He has healed me. This isn't possible with him. Not only with his healing, with his encouragement, with his pushing. I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing this for him. He's doing something through me that is so much bigger than the scale of my pant size. He's doing a work in me through this process. Maybe he's doing the same thing for you. And when you get frustrated that the scale's not moving, when you get frustrated that you're not seeing the results of 30 years of bad eating, or maybe just five, or maybe just eight months of bad choices, when you don't see it in eight days, we throw it in. Maybe God's testing your patience. God's time is perfect. God's plans are perfect. He doesn't work on your time schedule. He doesn't work on your plan. We do not serve a genie God. Maybe he wants to see how long you're going to hold on for him. That's what he is working through me. So Colossians 3, 23 through 24 says, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord, you will receive the inheritance as your reward. It's not about losing the weight. That's not my inheritance. Mine is king, kingdom, right? Mine is heaven. Is that yours? Then stop working for worldly things. Maybe that's why it hasn't ever worked because you're just working and working and working for worldly things that includes your weight. It has nothing to do with that. So whether you think you have time or you don't, you are right. I told myself this morning, I don't have time. I've got all these things. I'm now late for a call, <laughs> right? Or I can say, I get to do this. I don't have an hour. I do have 38 minutes. You don't have a half hour. You do have 10 minutes. You might not have an hour. And you might not have 30 minutes, but you do have five. You can do something during commercial breaks. You can do something instead of scrolling this. You can do something while scrolling this for all I care. You could do anything. You've got five minutes. And stop trying to plan your meals and your food. Gosh, stop doing that for the entire week. If that's what brings you stress, stop that. Just plan for like your next meal. I'm only thinking about what I'm doing for lunch right now. My husband has dinner, thankfully. <laughs> but that's all I'm thinking about is, all right, do I have what I need for that meal? Do, awesome, moving on. Then I will make sure I've got what I need for dinner after that. So the last scripture, I just saw it that I wanna, want to talk about is 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 25, because we're talking about running and it might not be running for you. It might just be cardio. It might be weightlifting. It might be whatever it is, but I want us to think about this. Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. 
Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we do it for the imperishable. Stop doing it for your weight that's going to fluctuate. Stop running your race for a pant size that doesn't mean anything and start doing it because that's what honors God. I, you didn't have to order a salad at lunch with your friends. You got to. It makes you feel better. You're not tired. You didn't have to order a water instead of a wine. You got to because you think clearer. You don't have to drink the wine. You don't have to eat another serving of whatever that is. You don't have to do anything. What are we doing to obtain the ultimate reward, which is Christ? I just want you to think about that today. Think about if you've been struggling with your weight and with your health and you keep stopping at that same point, don't you think there's something God's trying to teach you at that point? Do not be stubborn and stop. Push through and persevere to see what God is teaching you. Do not quit. Push through. Push through. You've got this. You really, really do. Not on your own, but through Christ. If you decide you need more help, you need some more guidance um, to figure out what right steps are for you, message me. Let me know. Comment below help, and we will talk about what personal training and nutrition coaching can look like, partnering together and with a group of ladies going through it at the same time. I'm very thankful for you, ladies. Thanks for hopping in and joining us today. I hope this helped. And remember, you do have five minutes. You can use them. Go get it. You don't need to be perfect. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.